Raji Suri now on the channel. Uh, uh, Raji Suri of uh, Shopperstop. The earnings are out, and he has a managing director and chief executive officer of Shopperstop joining us live right here on ET now. Thanks so much, Raji. Always a pleasure chatting with you. I want to first begin with the biggest uh, indicator that we see going forward. Your same store sales growth has come in at the highest in the last five quarters. Despite all the concerns, the market around uh, demand slowdown, weak sentiment, uh, the threat from online uh, companies. How did you manage it? How did you swing this uh, solid performance? So I think that we were uh, focusing more on providing our customers um, with new merchandise and focusing on fashion and beauty uh, rather than on uh, discounting in the early part of the quarter three. We've had a fantastic uh, uh, reception from the customers of our private brands. Our private brands grew uh, 29%, so that has really uh, helped us and been probably the best in the last many, many uh, quarters. Our uh, women's uh, Indian wear uh, collections were very well received by the customers. Uh, again during this quarter three as well as our denim at 15% uh, growth uh, helps for the uh, momentum in our sales. Okay Rajiv, let's talk about the specifics. Uh, what kind of traction did you see in the personal accessories? I'm talking about non-apparel as well as the beauty segments. Uh, you know, double digit run rate sustainable going forward. Is this the high margin business for you? So our uh, beauty and non-apparel business uh, grew by about 11% uh, to 12%. So we had a double digit growth. Uh, so that was a strong quarter for us. I think going forward, uh, we are looking at a single uh, digit uh, like for like growth. We, even though we had a record quarter, it's been the best quarter ever for uh, the company making 100 crores in one quarter in EBITDA. Uh, it had been the best uh, December. It's the first time we crossed 500 crores in one, uh, in one month. Uh, so we are optimistic but cautiously, uh, cautiously optimistic considering the macro environment around us and we will continue to stick to our strategy on uh, working with our customers and providing a great shopping experience. You did outperform despite weak sentiments in macro, uh, then why a cautious outlook? So uh, we are doing a lot of things uh, and I think that uh, to make a comment yet on how our collections are going to work, uh, we've just uh, launched our spring summer 19 uh, ranges. So a lot in the fashion in industry depends on the customer reaction to the collection. So until we see the first sort of reactions, uh, which we'll see after the end of season sale, we don't want to be too optimistic about it. We know we had a great uh, autumn winter season. The customers really loved what we uh, our designs and our collections. So it's a bit early for us to comment on spring summer 19. We have, we are sticking to our strategy in terms of focusing on beauty, our first citizen customers uh, and our personal shopper program which the, has received a fantastic response from the customers. Uh, we grew 31% in quarter three with our personal so shopper service and did 14% of our sales from that. So it just shows that we are connecting well with the customer. Would you attribute the strong bottom line growth to massive trans a massive traction seen in December and uh, one of expenses in the base uh, effect last year? So in, in, in quarter three, uh, we had a good, uh, we had a strong November also. I think um, uh, in, uh, so we focus our energies on where the business was, for example, during the lead up to Pujo, we, we focused on East. We had a 19% like for like growth there, which was also a record breaking growth for us. That led up to Diwali where we focused on the festive season and ethnic wear. Our ethnic wear business is up uh, 21%. So, so we were focusing on, on that. So I think it was a combination of uh, working with the first citizen customers and personal shopping, which really led to this uh, growth. Okay, Rajiv, now I want to talk to you uh, about the online world, the e-commerce world. You, I'm sure, are very familiar with the new guidelines uh, of the DIPP, changing the rules of the game. The definition of the marketplace has also been changed. This impacts uh, shopper stop and, uh, you know, puts a cloud over your ability to directly sell on uh, 
Amazon as Amazon's uh, as a stake sale to Amazon Investment Holdings may now be considered as a group company investment. How true is that? What does all of this, the new rules mean for Shopper Stop? Is the marketplace definition being changed for you? Can Amazon still source from you the way it was? So uh, we have sought uh, clarity from uh, the government authorities on whether this is applicable to us or not. We are waiting for their response. Uh, as you know, Amazon has 5% of our uh, uh, equity stake. So they neither have a board position nor a controlling stake. And the note does not clarify on what is the percentage of ownership. So we are waiting for that uh, clarification and we are hoping to receive that uh, before the new policy becomes effective. You know, let's say if it does not apply to the, uh, to the company, what would be the possible impact on your sales and future growth trajectory? So I think that uh, uh, firstly we'll comply with the law, we'll make a decision to, uh, on how we take this forward on I guess 31st uh, afternoon or evening as a percentage of our current business uh, it will not make any impact uh, to our bottom line or our growth in the near term our strategy with Amazon has always been a long term play strategy so we are in our infant uh, stages with them so in the immediate uh, future there will be no impact to our uh, financials Right, thanks so much, sir, for taking our time for us. Always good to get perspective. That was the management at Shopper Stop. The stock is absolutely flat. However, the numbers in Q3 uh, were on the positive side.